table view. A table view can be used to create and manipulate IPs using a table view rather than dynamic IP manipulation. Any part of the dialog in white is editable, anything in grey is locked. There are four options to move an IP. Free drag, slide on grade, move vertically or move along chainage. Remember the snaps can affect these options. IPs can be edited. Select set gradients, then select an IP to modify grades in and out. Edit IP, edit IP details allows the IP location or level to be modified and also the curve length if selected. Use quick vertical alignment to create a profile for my first master string. I select the vertical profile icon from the alignment toolbar. I'm going to select the design model which is by default still on design so I don't have to change that. I'm going to pick my master string from the display or I could have used the string name drop down. I'm going to hit next. I'm going to cut a existing profile and the survey triangulation is the best model to use for this surface. At this moment in time I'm not going to add a collinear profile so I'm going to hit next. This will give me a split screen, two views, one and two. In the top view, which is view one, I have a plan and I'm just going to pan that across so we can see the horizontal alignment. And in the bottom, which is the view two, I've got a vertical profile with my section cut through the existing ground model. I'm going to alter the vertical exaggeration. I'm going to set this to 10 to 1 so we can see the profile a lot easier in the display. We've also got vertical lines shown in the profile. These are all the horizontal tangent points. So here's the end of the first straight. There's my transition. There's my first right hand curve. And I can also see if I look into the vertical alignment toolbar, horizontal radius is shown as, as 360. I'm now going to set my parameters for the design. So I'm going to left click on the parameters icon. And we're going to use K values for the design. And my default K value for 60 kph is going to be 30. My K value for sag curves is going to be 20. For this design, I'm going to set a maximum grade of 8% and a minimum grade of 0.5%. Basically, if I go above or below these values, I'm going to get a warning in the quick vertical alignment toolbar. I'm also leaving the default annotation as before with the uh, horizontal design. We've got, again, annotation for vertical design. I'm going to go OK to save the parameters. And now, yet again, these parameters will remain the same for my alignments until I alter them. If I look at the bottom half of the quick vertical alignment toolbar, I can see that I have XZ. As I move my cursor along the profile in the bottom view there, you can see the XZ, the change and level update. Uh, we have the current snap surface shown in green. I am now going to add some IPs. I'm going to select Add IP. And I'm going to run left to right with my IPs. At the minute I'm not using snaps. IP1, IP2 and left click for IP3. As you can see now I've got gradients and cut and fill values shown in the toolbar. As I move my cursor along you can see we've also got level difference between the design and the existing or the current snap surface. The three IPs that I've inserted are shown with green symbols. There is also a red symbol shown. This is the peak of the hog curve. I would also have a red symbol if I'd got a sag curve. This would be showing the low point on that curve. Just going to demonstrate some of the icons on the alignment toolbar here. The red question mark. As I place my cursor over, over IPs, I get information. Obviously I'm on a straight here so I'm just getting an out gradient. As I move my cursor 
close to IP2, we get a vertical curve length, the radius, in and out gradients, and a change of gradient. I'm going to close that panel. I can delete the profile. Yet again, I'm going to use the undo button, which is three from the right on the panel. We can add other surfaces to this profile. If I left click on this icon here, I can select model names from the database and I could add them to the list. I could modify styles and uh, colors. I can also remove them if I make a mistake. I could also go to the advanced tab here and I could create offset profiles through any model I could also display associated strings and add them to the profile. I'm going to cancel out of that panel. We have the snap surface selector. If I select that icon, at the minute I've only got one surface added to my profile and it is active. It's the survey triangles. If I add other profiles, which I'll do later on, you'll see there be these will be listed and I can select any of them via the radio button and this would update the color of the snap surface and whenever I use the locks it would snap to this surface. Snap to surface means if I add an IP or an insert an IP it will go vertically down, vertically down and snap to the surface. If I use snap to point it will snap to the nearest point on the current snap surface. I'm going to use the lock IPs. This is very important when we're doing vertical design. The vertical profile must extend for the full length of the horizontal design. If I choose select first X on grade, the first IP will extend to change zero on the current gradient. We'll undo that. If I select first X, the elevation remains the same at IP1 but just extends out to change 0. I'll undo that. If I select first XZ, the first IP will snap to the current snap surface at change 0. Now I need this to occur at both ends of the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select first and last XZ and if you look at IPs 1 and 2, sorry 1 and 3, they will both extend out to the existing ground surface. My window in now, you can see IP1 has snapped to the current snap surface at change 0. And if I window across to IP3, the same has occurred. I'm just going to use insert IP to show how the snapping works. If I left click in the profile view, I had no snap selected. So where I selected with my cursor, it is inserted the IP. I'll undo that. Select insert IP and use the first magnet which is locked to surface or snap to surface. If I left click in the drawing window, we drop and drape on the existing surface. That is not snap to a point, only the surface. If I undo that and insert an IP with the second magnet, wherever I select it'll snap to the nearest point on the current snap surface. If I window in, it is now snapped to a point. I'm going to undo, window out, we're going to look at uh, table view. I tend to use this quite a bit for checking the K values that I've put in for my hog and sag curves, but I could go into any of these white parts of the panels and edit. Anything greyed out is locked. Delete IP. If I select an IP from the profile, it will remove it. I'll undo again. We have move IP. At the minute I have the snaps on so I'll just 
toggle the snap off. If I left click on an IP, you can see there is a free move. When I let go of my left cursor, the IP has been moved. If I use snaps while I've got the move IP, so I'm going to snap to point. If I move the IP with the left hand mouse button and let go, it will snap to the nearest point on the current snap surface. Slide. This is the same as for the horizontal quick alignment toolbar. If I left click before the second IP, keep my left button down, I can maintain the incoming grade to that IP and I let go. If I select to the right of IP2, keep my left cursor depressed and slide, you can see that the outgoing gradient is maintained. If I let go of the cursor, I've modified the IP. We have something called Bounce. Bounce allows me to lift the IP up and down, but the chainage will not alter. I can also see from the alignment toolbar here that as I move the second IP up and down, the cut fill balance is updating, the level difference, and also it's showing the incoming grade. And if I bring that down, as I go below half a percent, you can see that the grade is a warning, shown in red. As I move it up, greater than half a percent, again the gradient is shown in grey. I'm going to let go with the left mouse button. We have something called skid. That's the next icon along. Basically, if I grab the second IP, I can move it left and right in the display, but I cannot alter the elevation of this IP. I let go with the left cursor and I've now moved the IP. I can set gradients. If you select close to an IP it activates that IP. So there's IP1. If I left click by IP2, if I let click by IP3 again that makes that the active IP. Now what I'm going to do is I need to set my incoming grade to 4.17% so I left click by IP1 and I set the gradient to 4.17 and I apply. I can left click on IP3 to activate it and I need an incoming grade to that IP to be 0.5% and I apply that. I'm now going to close. Now happy with the vertical profile, so I'm going to hit the green tick to update the master string with the elevations I've just set. I just get a little warning about the vertical scale. Should I need to take this into final drawings at a later stage, I'm just going to say yes, accept this warning. And I've now got elevations added to my master string.